the most powerful way to understand what's going on in the world and the most powerful way to understand why other people do the things that they do is to become really clear about why I am the way that I am and why I do the things that I do and what's the motivation and what's the drive and what seems to um, have power or be able to influence the way that I am in the world and the way that I speak and the way that I relate and the way that I behave. And it's really powerful to see that I really used to believe that every thought, every emotion and every sensation that I experienced had power over me. So every passing thought the thought that um, thoughts of ir irritation or anger with somebody, that those thoughts really had power over me and could dictate and inform the way that I acted and related. And so when those thoughts would come up, I would then react on them and I would behave in a way that seemed to be... Um, I, I was a victim to those thoughts and those emotions. And so to recognize in a short moment that when I just relax and allow everything to be as it is, there's nothing that can be found to have a nature separate or apart from the open intelligence within which everything is known or experienced. If you stop thinking for a moment, what remains? There's an alertness, there's a cognizance, there's something that is aware of the next thought that just naturally arises. And so in the Balance View training, what we have is a really simple practice of short moments of just relaxing mind and body and allowing this flow of data, this flow of experience, just to be exactly as it is. And when we do that, what's recognized is this natural intelligence, is the wide open expanse of mind that is open like a clear sky. And this practice of short moments repeated many times gives us a different perspective and context on all of these thoughts and emotions and experiences that seem to have this power over us. Now, when I began to put this into practice, what I began to see was that I didn't actually have any control over my thoughts and emotions and experiences. So I wanted to be a confident person, I wanted to be a positive person, I wanted to feel happy, I wanted to feel um, like I really knew what was going on, and yet my experience was often exactly the opposite. I often felt miserable, I often felt confused, I often felt nervous, and um, it was so powerful then to begin to apply this practice of short moments with all of these different, ex different experiences, with these thoughts, to see that I could allow them to be as they were, and that when I did that, there was an immediate sense of relief, a sense of spaciousness, a sense of ease, a sense of clarity. That I could just relax and allow everything to be as it was. And as I repeated these short moments, my confidence and my assurance began to grow. That this intelligence that I identified when I stopped thinking was also the basis of all of the thoughts that I had. It never went anywhere. So whether you're thinking or not thinking, open intelligence is always naturally present. And this is what you can test out for yourself through this practice of short moments. And so knowing the nature of reality, testing for myself and seeing that open intelligence was naturally present, completely reliable, and whenever I tapped into it, whenever I just allowed everything to be as it was, and recognized its natural presence, just acknowledged it was there, there was a, a capacity and a clarity of mind that otherwise I found very difficult to access. And this capacity was the capacity to be of benefit. And at the beginning that was quite a kind of um, a, a difficult idea or a difficult concept. But the key point was to test this out, was to discover for myself what happens when rather than emphasizing all of my thoughts and emotions, all of the sensations, all of the unpredictable experience, I just relax for short moments and allow everything to be as it is, and instead emphasize the open intelligence that is the basis of all of those thoughts, emotions and experiences.
Because <clears throat> in my own experience, I'd seen, well, what was the result when I do emphasize these thoughts, emotions, and experiences? How, how does that mean that I relate and behave in the world? And I saw that really it was completely unpredictable. So when I was feeling positive, when I had uh, you know, pleasant sensations and I felt happy, you know, I was nice to people. And things seemed to be going well. And I'd wake up another morning and I wouldn't feel so positive. I'd feel lonely or negative or like everything was pointless. And I'd be mean to people. Or at least I would shut down and I wouldn't have that... Um, that openness of relating that I really wanted. And I began to see when I looked more closely at my own experience, and I looked back at my life, and I saw that I'd always had the best intentions. Like, always. And I'd always wanted to be um, a happy person. I'd wanted to have good relationships with people, open, loving, caring relationships. I'd always wanted to be a powerful person. I'd always wanted to... Um, when I saw an injustice in the world or something I felt was um, out of order, I wanted to be able to speak up about that. But that was a, actually a perfect example of the limitations I felt when I focused in on the data streams that I had in that particular circumstance. So, for example, um, if I saw something going on that I didn't like or I felt um, uncomfortable about, there would be lots of feelings of... I'm, I'm, well, I'm English, so lots of embarrassment about not being able to speak up or say anything. What will people think of me if I go and um, approach these people and let them know that what they're doing is not acceptable? What, how will they react? And there was all of these thoughts and all of these imaginings about what the outcome would be, and my focus and my emphasis would be on those. And most of the time that would mean that there was no possibility of me standing up and speaking up for something that I saw really needed to be addressed. I was so focused in on my feelings of embarrassment, of concern about what people would think or what people would say, that it was, um, it was like being paralysed. And it was the same I saw in so many other situations, social situations. You know, being around other people, there was just feelings of awkwardness almost all of the time. And I'd walk in and I'd be feeling really confident and then immediately collapsing into this awkwardness. And again, it's a perfect example of the focus and the emphasis on data, of just how limiting it was. And then when I looked more closely, I saw that in my life I'd had different conflicts with certain people. There'd been certain relationships where even if I'd had this best intention, the way that I'd spoken and the way that I'd behaved, had been really far from what I had wanted it to be. And I'd found myself saying um, nasty or unkind or aggressive things to people. And when I look clearly, I see, well, why had I been doing that? You know, what, what, what's going on there? You know, I, I don't want to behave like that. And when I do, um, you know, when somebody makes me angry and I, and I shout at them, I, it feels terrible. You know, that, that sense of like, burning, um, like self-hatred, self-disgust. Why, oh, why did I say that? I hate saying that. I was justified in saying it, but I hate doing it. And to see that this also was just this same basic mechanism of the emphasis on data streams, this feeling of anger, of irritation, a feeling that it has this power over me. And to begin then to apply short moments with these sensations too. To see that nothing can be found to have a nature separate or apart from open intelligence. And this is what I saw through applying the practice of short moments. No thought, no emotion and no sensation was in anything other than the bright shine of mind. So there was this open intelligence, naturally present, shining forth all of this incredible array, this display of data. And when I took the data to have this independent nature, then my behavior was really unpredictable. My speech was often unkind, or at least not as powerful as I knew it could be. However, when I began to practice relying on open intelligence for short moments, and I began to participate in the Four Mainstays, I began to discover that all of the qualities that I wanted to have in myself to be able to speak up in clear, powerful ways when that was really what was necessary, 
to have open, clear and loving relationships with everybody, that was, I mean, how is that possible? But through this practice and through this training, through participating in the written trainings, listening to the media, taking short moments whenever I naturally remembered in a completely relaxed way, these qualities that I'd had glimpses of, like I knew that was there, I knew how I had that potential and possibility within me. You know, I knew I could be a nice person, I knew I could be a powerful person, I knew I could be a loving, easygoing person. So why wasn't it there all of the time? Why did I have conflicts? Why was there um, relationships that seemed really difficult? It was all due to emphasis on data, giving them this independent nature that actually they couldn't be found to have. And so when I began to see this pattern in myself of either emphasizing data or relying on open intelligence and seeing these qualities come about of, of ease of relating, of clarity of thought, of deeper and deeper insight into the nature of reality, and I began to see why I'd had difficulties and conflicts in my life, then it became obvious to me simultaneously that this was exactly the same for all other beings. Each of us had our unique experience and yet this fundamental mechanism was exactly the same. And when it was taken to extremes, the extreme emphasis on data, of hatred, of judgment, of criticism and blame, and I saw that in my own experience, how that caused this conflict, how that caused this playing out of aggression and of blame. <coughs> then it became obvious to me that this is what is playing out not just for all people but in society as a whole and between societies, between nations. This is why we see the incredible violence, the incredible hatred that we see in the world. It's the emphasis on data and it becomes more and more extreme the more it's emphasized. Now this would be a, 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 a cause for incredible distress and concern if there wasn't a solution. <laughs> And this is what you find in the Balanced View training. A solution where each of us can empower ourselves to be these powerful, loving examples of what a human being can be. Where we're no longer afraid of who we are. No longer afraid of what we think or what we feel. Allowing everything to be as it is. And in that is our power to be of great benefit. I was just thinking about the confusion that comes about through emphasis on data, giving it this independent nature. And um, it's kind of quite funny because there can be a question about emphasis on laziness and how this idea or this feeling of laziness seems to have so much power over me and that um, you know, perhaps that's who I am, I'm just a lazy person. And then side by side with that is um, sometimes the emphasis on, on money and lack of money. That doesn't make any sense. Hold on, I can't have these two together because, you know, if I'm a lazy person and I'm somebody that wants lots of money and I'm concerned about the money, then that's just, it's just complete madness. Because actually we have the power to create the kind of life that we want. We can be as powerful as we choose to be. And it is only the emphasis on data that seems, that makes it seem like we are limited. Actually, we are completely wide open. There is no thought, no emotion or sensation that can have the power over us unless we give it that power. And when we allow everything to be as it is, the information that we need from any data stream is immediately accessible. So rather than drifting off into ideas about laziness, we can just relax. If we don't want to do anything, then we don't do anything. We don't need to give ourselves a hard time about that. Because often in my experience, laziness was um, very quickly followed by guilt. Oh, I'm feeling really lazy. I shouldn't feel lazy. I want lots of money, but I'm feeling lazy. <laughs> Instead, just relax. And if you don't want to do anything, then you can completely enjoy doing nothing. 
But if you have this drive and you really want to do something, then that power to achieve that is through relying on open intelligence. Because otherwise the thoughts and emotions are always changing. And we think we want to achieve something, but then we feel lazy. And so we're like this, this ship that's just being blown around from left to right. I want lots of money, now I'm lazy. Now I'm lazy, I want lots of money. Just, just swinging backwards and forwards. And, and there's no stability and there's no clarity there when we're emphasizing the different and ever-changing stream of data. When we rely on open intelligence, there is an immediate clarity that we have access to. And this is, this is our birthright as human beings. This is what we all have access to. And so that's what you'll find in the Balanced View training, is a really simple practice, the practice of short moments, that allows you to access this intelligence that sees everything, it includes everything. It's the intelligence that is seeing everything and including everything right now. Naturally present, looking through your eyes. So you just become familiar with that through this practice of short moments. And then the rest of the training supports the recognition of open intelligence as the basis of everything that you think and you feel and you sense. And it is in that instinctive and direct recognition that the power is extracted from those data streams. This is where you discover this fearlessness. It's by facing everything fully whilst relying on open intelligence and supported by this incredible um, empowerment network. And trying to do it on my own meant that I could see that inseparability with certain things and yet there were other things that still seemed to have that power over me, that would still take me down. And by showing up and by seeing that I had the capacity to train up this open intelligence in all circumstances, it was naturally present always, but I had to recognize that. And that is what the training provided me, these really simple tools and a safe space to get to know this about myself as the basis of all data, without exception. Nothing can be found to have an independent nature. And so to go around giving things an independent nature means that I was going to continue leading a life of disempowerment, of confusion and of conflict. And the starting point of seeing that I've, I've had enough of that. I don't want to live my life like that anymore. And here in Balanced View you will find everything that you need to empower yourself to see that you can choose to lead your life however you want to lead it. And that is an alignment that naturally is with the benefit of all. That was that innate good intention that I'd always had. This was this desire to be of benefit to myself and other people. I just hadn't named it as that, I hadn't understood it as that, but that's what it was. And this is what you become empowered to express in your mind, your body, your speech, your qualities and activities. Okay?